if you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate that, in that, That's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Trans women are competing against women taking valuable opportunities for the uh, long protected class under Title IX. Caitlyn Jenner, the world's most famous transgender former athlete, has been for years extremely outspoken on the issue of trans women competing in women's sports. Important to note that Caitlyn Jenner was an Olympic athlete years before she transitioned. I'm passionate about it. It's amazing how much flack I get and all I'm trying to do is protect women. You know? Now she's come out in support of a New York County ban on trans women and girls from being able to use 100 public sports facilities that are run by Nassau County. The executive order was signed on February 22nd and Jenner appeared at a press conference with Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman who signed the order on March 18th. The difference between men and women exists based on DNA or your chromosomes, which leads to our physical development, regardless of a trans person's hormone surgeries, status and transition, there are massive advantages and undeniable differences from male development. All right, guys, so we got to talk about some major news that surely will have the woke revolutionaries upset. But, 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 uh, this is something that it seems like it has to happen because you have some people who don't have the cojones to stand up for biological women in sports. I'm talking about Don Staley, who this weekend and famously came out and supported uh, biological males being able to compete against biological uh, women in sports. Okay, she said that, hey, yeah, I would support a biological man playing against my women's basketball team. Well, probably what she actually really supports is uh, being able to rec recruit a biological male to play for the women's team, her women's team, and then she can continue to dominate and win championships, right? I think that's what she actually really wants, okay? Because I guarantee you, uh, if she was to lose a championship to a team that had a biological male, I guarantee you she'd come out here and be singing a different tune, right? She'd be talking about how it's unfair and yada, 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 but who knows? Maybe not. Maybe she's that afraid of the mob that she wouldn't say anything. But I do know that uh, she knows the truth, okay? She knows exactly what is the right thing to do when it comes to this issue that eventually will be an issue, okay? Because we saw with Leah Thomas that, hey, you know, I mean, these athletes are going to sign up to compete against women in sports. And when they do, they dominate as Leah Thomas did in swimming, okay? So, the NCAA needs to get ahead of this, right? I would recommend that they get ahead of this and that they nip this issue in the bud before it becomes more of a problem. And then at that point, you know, it's out of control, okay? And they should probably take a page out of the NAIA's playbook, a association of small colleges that basically just approved a ban on trans athletes from women's sports, okay? So they have basically decided that, hey, you know what? We're going to get ahead of the curb on this, and we're just going to go ahead and issue a ban, right? So this is big, big, big news, okay? And um, you, you're starting to see uh, this happen basically everywhere because people all agree that, yes, biological males have an advantage over uh, women. Now, the left is going to come out here and say, oh, they're banning trans women from sports. That's not true. If you are trans, you can play, okay? Nobody has banned trans athletes from playing uh, any sport that matches their uh, sex at birth, right? I mean, that's just what it is, okay? That has not happened. That will never happen. And I don't care how much the left fear mongers about this. Um, you know, hey, that's not going to stop some of these organizations and these states with common sense from doing the right thing. So, without further ado, let's read here. The National Association of Intercollegiate 
uh, Athletics announced Monday it will ban transgender women from participating in women's sports. The National Small College Organization's Council of Presidents approved in a 20 to 0 vote a policy that only students who were assigned the female gender at birth could compete in women's sports. You mean that were born female, right? I mean, that's that's what it is, right? You're not assigned anything, right? You're just born a female or male or who knows if, if you have some type of genetic anomaly then, you know, that's a whole different issue. But that is so few and far between. That is so rare that it's not really even relevant. Uh, the new policy also blocks transgender women or non-binary students who are receiving masculinizing hormone therapy. So I guess what that means is that, um, you know, if you are a non-binary or a transgender woman, uh, you can't play sports if you are on performance enhancing drugs. Because at that point, you, you would be on performance enhancing drugs right and that would be unfair right it would be unfair uh quote we know there are a lot of different opinions out there in aia president jim carr told cbs sports dennis dodd for us we believe our first responsibility was to create fairness and competition in the naia he said the nia also believes its new policy aligns with the reasons Title IX was created. Yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, that's <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, these people are trying to take a step back uh, with all the progress that we've made for women, but at the same time, they'll tell you how they're pro-woman, right? It, it doesn't make sense. Quote, you're allowed to have separate but equal opportunities for women to compete, Carr said. He told CBS Sports that all NAIA athletes who are no longer eligible for women's competition could still participate in men's for sports, which effectively means that they're not banned, right? They're not banned at all, despite what the left will say. They'll come out here and they'll say, oh, trans athletes have been banned. Nope, not true at all. A student who has begun hormone therapy may participate in activities such as workouts, practices, and team activities, but not in interscholastic competition. Quote, with the exception of competitive cheer and competitive dance, the NAIA created separate categories for male and female participants. The NAIA said each NAIA sport includes some combination of strength, speed, and stamina, providing uh, competitive advantages for male student athletes. As a result, the NAIA policy for transgender student athletes applies to all sports except for competitive cheer and competitive dance which are open to all students. I mean, everybody knows uh, the males that <laughs> like to join the cheerleading squad, right? I mean, that was something that was uh, a thing when I went to school. So I, I guess they're leaving that untouched. The organization is believed to be the first to mandate that athletes compete according to their assigned sex at birth. There is no known number of transgender athletes at the high school and college levels, though it is believed to be small. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because it's only going to get larger with the woke agenda being pushed on kids is only going to get larger. OK, so that means that today it might not be a huge issue, but tomorrow it will be right. And any young girl or young athlete that is not provided an opportunity or has an opportunity taken away from them because of having to compete against someone of the opposite sex, um, that is devastating in and of itself. It should never happen. OK, so it doesn't matter how small of an issue it is. Um, it's still an issue and it's an easy issue to fix, right? In fact, it should be an issue in the first place, but because we've lost sight of common sense in reality in this country, unfortunately, we have to address this, okay? The NAIA is the national athletic governing body for uh, 249 mostly small colleges and about 83,000 student athletes in more than 25 sports. The organization's membership is about 80% private schools and is not a part of the NCAA's three divisions of competition. Hours after the NAIA announcement, the NCAA released a statement, quote, College sports are the premier stage for women's sports in America, and the NCAA will continue to promote Title IX, make unprecedented investments in women's sports, and ensure fair competition for all student athletes in all NCAA championships. Shawali Patel, senior counsel at the National Women's Law Center, said her organization was outraged by the NAIA policy. Quote, this is 
unacceptable and blatant discrimination that not only harms trans, non-binary, and intersex individuals, but limits the potential of all athletes. Patel said in a statement, it's important to recognize that these discriminatory policies don't enhance fairness and competition. Instead, they send a message of exclusion and reinforce dangerous stereotypes that harm all women. Yeah. So again, this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, right? It's just based off woke pseudoscience. Uh, and, you know, the NAIA, it seems like they are making policy uh, based off real science. And the real science says that, hey, this is not fair. This is something that we should not allow for the good of women's sports. And, you know, it is what it is. And this is something that you're saying becoming more and more and more commonplace because there is a need for it, considering the fact that we do have a lot of these kids that are now being exposed to the, you know, wokeness and they're going down this route. So you're going to see a lot more of this. OK, and in order to get ahead of it. You have to do stuff like this. Again, it's unfortunate, but you got to do stuff like this in order to nip it in the bud. Right. So with that being said, again, congratulations to the NAIA, um, you know, for getting ahead of this. Uh, maybe the NCAA will come around as well, too. And they'll nip this in the bud before we get another situation where we have to see a biological male dominate a woman's competition which is something that we really should never see right we really should never see that and put it this way i mean in the sense that it's forced right if you know they they want to have um you know open competition for all genders and if it's agreed upon from all parties great but forcing women to have to compete against biological males should never ever ever happen so hey let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace